Jason Brown is an American fugitive wanted in Phoenix, Arizona for first degree murder and armed robbery. Brown is accused of fatally shooting an armored vehicle guard outside a movie theater before fleeing with 56,000 US dollars. The FBI designated him as the 489 fugitive to be added to its 10 most wanted list. He's armed and highly dangerous. Jason Derek Brown was born on July 1, 1969, in Los Angeles, California, to David John Brown Sr. and his wife. He was a graduate of Laguna Beach High School. Brown holds a master's degree in international business and speaks excellent French. From 1988 to 1990, he served a mission for the Church of the Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints in Paris. Between 1990 to 2004, he lived at Dana Point and the Corona del Mar district of New Spot Beach, both in Orange County, California. Toys Unlimited and the doorstep advertising were two of Brown's enterprise, both of which he conducted out of his house in Salt Lake City, Utah. To finance his luxury lifestyle and costly interest in automobiles, motorcycles and boats, he works as a toy salesman and golf equipment importer. Brown presented himself as a rich guy despite having failed on at least one big loan and amazing ten of thousands of dollars in debt by 2004. Brown is said to have run check and bank fraud for years in order to support the image he had cultivated. Brown may have been the culprit of a number of unsolved minor crimes and house invasions. He would occasionally go to auto showrooms, shave and well dress, and buy a car using a bogus social security number and address. Brown attended a weapon training course at Totally Awesome Guns and Range in Salt Lake City in November 2004. Only days after purchasing a .5 caliber Glock handgun, he had passed a background check and had provided his fingerprint to state and federal authorities. Brown was out practicing shooting when he hit an adjacent vehicle during belonging to another guy who was out with his son, for which he later paid the truck $1,300 in damage. Brown was staying at an Ahuatuki, Arizona, hotel near an AMC movie theater at the time. He was seen on camera in the hotel foyer having a chat with another man. The individual is suspected of being a co-conspirator or witness, but his name is unclear. A 24-year-old armored vehicle guard named Robert Kate Palomares was carrying the weekend deposit into the AMC cinema at 4915 E. Ray Road in Phoenix on November 29, 2004. A hooded shooter surprised Palomares about 10 a.m. and shot him with a .45 caliber semi-automatic Glock. Palomares was hit in the head by five of the six bullet fired. Palomares, although being armed, had little time to defend himself. The gunman rushed into a neighborhood alley and left on a bicycle with the money back carrying 56,000 USD in cash. Palomares was sent to Good Samaritan Hospital and pronounced dead there. Witnesses first characterized the gunman as Hispanic and between the age of 25 and 30. Authorities, on the other hand, retrieved the bicycle and extracted the fingerprint from it, linking Brown to the ambush murder. As a result, he was quickly identified as the primary suspect in the crime, and on December 4, the Maricopa County Superior Court issued an arrest warrant charging Brown with first-degree murder and armed robbery. In a federal arrest warrant issued on December 6 by the United States District Court for the District of Arizona, Brown was additionally charged with unauthorized flight to evade prosecution. Brown's poor financial status has been suggested as a probable motive by investigators. Brown escaped from Arizona to Henderson, Nevada, shortly after being named as a suspect. He moved on to Las Vegas, where he traded in his BMW M3 for a black Cadillac Escalade that he had stored. He then proceeded to Orange County, California, where he remained with family until December 6, 2004, when FBI investigators executing an arrest warrant were one hour late. Brown allegedly used his credit card at a petrol station in Southern Orange County, then drove to San Diego near the Mexican border before arriving in Portland, Oregon. Brown then became a ghost, according to FBI, and vanished entirely off the grid. Authorities located his abandoned Cadillac in a long-term parking facility in the Portland International Airport on January 16, 2005. While in Portland, the fugitive addresses a box to his older brother, David John Brown II of San Diego, containing clothes and golf equipment. David Brown was charged with obstruction of justice on April 20, 2005. According to the indictment, he interfered with evidence when he deep cleaned his brother Jason BMW in early December after driving it from a Las Vegas storage facility to California. The FBI had inquired as to where he was aware of any storage lockers owned by his younger brothers in Las Vegas. David Brown stated that he was not, but prosecutors were able to establish that he was. In 2007, 
David John Brown to plead guilty to lying to the FBI and was sentenced to three years of probation by Arizona federal judge. By 2005, the FBI had received over 200 leads in the case, the majority of which originated outside of Arizona and dozen of which originated outside of the United States, including probable sighting in Canada. The FBI has had more leads on Brown than anybody else on its 10 most wanted list because of his California surferman image and ability to blend into crowds, with the bulk of them becoming false leads. His strong similarity to actor Sean Penn has been observed by reporters. One of Penn's body doubles was once detained by authorities after being mistaken for Brown. Brown was the 489 fugitive to be added to the FBI 10 most wanted list on December 8, 2007. The most recent confirmed setting was in August 2008 near Salt Lake City Hogel Zoo. When they were both stopped at a traffic signal, a friend of Brown's, someone who had gone to missionary school with him and accompanied him on his trip to France, recognized him. Brown accelerated through the signal and rushed away as soon as they both recognized one another. Brown had a darker tan and longer hair. Then in 2004 photos on his wanted poster, according to witness who shared his encounter with authorities. Juan Becerra, an FBI special agent based in Salt Lake City, said that he traveled there to see person he knew. It's quite difficult for people to modify their lifestyle and behaviors, according to Bakera. This is a man who remains in shape, enjoys exercise, and cares about his appearance. We are hopeful he being spotted at a nightclub or a fitness center. Brown liked being outside, which might be another factor for his desire to reside in Salt Lake City, according to him. Brown might be hidden in a plain sight within the Mormon community, living with a spouse who is unaware of his true identity or he could have departed the country and be residing in France, Quebec, or Thailand, according to investigators. Jason Derek Brown has been on the run for over 17 years and has yet to be found. Lance Lazing, a former FBI supervisory agent, has been looking for Brown for over 17 years. Only a year ago, Lazing left the FBI field office in Phoenix. When the crime occurred on November 2019-2004, he was one of the first on the scene. I never imagined he remained a fugitive for this long. In fact, we were quite close to arresting him, Lazing added. He recalls the facts as if the case file were standing in front of him, and he speaks of Brown as if he knew him personally. One day he'll be one thing, the next day he'll be something else, Lazing added. According to Lazing, there's enough evidence to suggest Brown had a plan and came to carry out that day. There was a preparation, surveillance, materials purchase, and was out practicing his shooting in the desert before to do real killing. Lazing said, while he could kill an innocent armored vehicle guard during a haze, Lazing explained, he was also image conscious and wanted to be the nice guy in the life of the party at the same time. Jamie Brown's Martin, Jason Derek Brown's sister, has witnessed all sides. Martin reminded, I just can't believe he would do anything like this because he was such a sweet, gentle soul. She did say though that Brown had a dark side, as Martin described it. Jason didn't just wake up like this one day, Martin explained. From the age of 8 or 9 years old, he was being taught to be a criminal. Martin said that their father, who vanished 10 years before Brown, provided them with instruction. My father used to beat the crap out of him, Martin explained, because he recognized himself in my father. He became my father's little minion, assisting him with all his filthy tasks. Martin said that he came to her home and stayed for several days before Brown was recognized as the suspect, never knowing what Brown was accused of. There was no sign at all that there was anything unusual going on. Martin explained. Martin claimed the two spent many days together until Brown returned from golfing with his brother and said he had to go. Martin remembers talking with Brown as he quietly collected his belongings and went. I remember embracing him and asking, when are you coming back? And he said, I'll be back someday. Martin explained. I recall his holding me again, at which it was a second hug, a stronger hug. Then I just stood there and watched him drive away. Why would he say anything like that? I wonder in the back of my mind. Why someday? And now, it's been nearly 17 years since someday. It shattered my family, Martin added. Martin claimed she's found some closure by authoring a book about their family history and Brown's alleged deeds. Center of attention, a true crime memory. But she's still wanting for him to be apprehended. Jason will be discovered one day, Martin said. Brown was followed to Portland in 2004, according to Lacing, but he has since vanished. Brown's family, Kate family, and the case are still waiting for closure, according to Lazing. The FBI will not stop hunting him, and the Phoenix Police Department will not stop looking for him either. He must be receiving assistance from someone. 
He's not the sort of person who can live alone in the middle of nowhere for 17 years, losing a split. He's going to have taken on a new identity. He's going to tell someone he's not who he's claimed to be. Lacing said. As of now, Brown's whereabouts is still a mystery and information leading to Brown's capture. The FBI is offering a reward of up to 200,000 US dollars.